Hey everybody, um, my name is Brian Saffler. I am, let's click the next slide, the global industry leader for communications, media, and entertainment at Databricks. For those that don't know what Databricks is, we are an open and unified data and AI platform. We've been around since 2013. We're one of the pioneers and founders of the Lakehouse architecture. And uh, I'm gonna be talking to you about what are the key components of building an AI stack today. So let's jump in. I think it's important to uh, just dig into that question. Oh, a little closer, perfect, sorry about that. Um, what makes an AI stack? At the base level layer, it's where you store your data, you're gonna need to have a data platform, ideally one that sits atop one of the three cloud providers, an Amazon, a Microsoft, or a Google. Above that, you're gonna have a layer of governance. This is where you're gonna manage your security, your permissions. Then you're gonna need a layer where you're gonna be able to ensure your AI systems can efficiently access, manage, and utilize that data. And then on top of that, you're gonna need some tools. Tools to prepare your data in order to build and evaluate that data and then serve that data to the end user applications in which you're pushing it to. And finally, there's a layer above all of that, which is your operations layer. This is where you don't just do this once, but you do so in a continuous way, this concept of live operations. This is the basic makeup of an AI stack. But before we dig in, I wanna ground us in some reality here. There's a lot of teams that are investing in and looking at experimenting with AI applications. And according to a recent study by IBM and our friends over at MIT, we see about three quarters of CEOs who are looking at advanced AI as a way to drive value for their business. And then of employees who are using AI when surveyed, they say that they see upwards of a 40% improvement in performance. It's pretty impressive which basically comes down to this idea that AI is gonna help drive innovation, increase competitiveness, and ultimately increase productivity. But why is it then that nearly 80% of advanced AI applications, and in particular generative AI applications, fail to make it into production? The simple answer is it's often not really well working with your data. And a lot of this can be traced back to the way that teams build their AI stack. So let's talk about this. What does the brave new world of AI require? First and foremost, the foundation of a successful AI stack requires a unified data and AI platform, one that eliminates data silos and allows for scale able to handle any type of data at any frequency. Two, it requires that the platform that you treat has a worldview of AI as a first class citizen and that it, you use a systems-based approach, which we're gonna get into in just a second. And then third, this brave new world of AI requires that this unified platform allows you to share the output of your AI initiatives internally and externally without ever having to copy or move the data, which ultimately is gonna help you control costs. This is also what it means to operate from a lens of data intelligence. So what do I mean by data intelligence? Let's unpack that. Imagine that you're the business leader of a chain coffee shop and you've got a bunch of stores across the US and your marketing department comes to you and says, hey, I'd like to use generative AI to create some social posts about the best-selling cookie that we have in our San Francisco office. So if you were to try and use a general intelligence platform like ChatGPT, you're gonna get a very generic response. The reason why is it's trained on the internet of data, not on your data. And as the presentation before from Julian described, training on your data is actually a huge and important point of this. Fundamentally, general intelligence applications don't understand the semantics of your business. It doesn't know what your best-selling cookie is, it doesn't know the revenue of your San Francisco store, or even what your customers think about it. But when you build with data intelligence in mind, you create far more meaningful results. Something that understands your data, what's selling in your store, what your customers are thinking about it, how you define the term cookie. It even can generate images and video based off of the unstructured video and images that you provide to it. Let's talk about another example. This is a company called FactSet. FactSet is a Fortune 500 financial services organization. They have a proprietary language they call FQL, or FactSet query language. Now, they're having an issue. Their employees are struggling to learn FQL primarily because FQL doesn't have a lot of transposable use outside of FactSet. And so nobody wants to learn it. FactSet turns to ChatGPT, turns to a 
a generative AI application and say, hey, I want to talk to it in natural language. I want to give this to my employees, and I want them to be able to use that to create FQL. Sounds pretty straightforward. So they used the best model that they could find at the time. This was GPT-4, and this is the result. 60% accuracy, which means that only 60% of the time is the output delivering FQL in a way that they can use it against their business. Raise your hand if you think that's good. You all passed. That's terrible. If you want to use generative AI, it needs to be as good, if not better, than the human who's using it. And so, facts that step back, they said, all right, how do we do this with a data intelligence point of view? I love the presentation that was just before us because it really talked about right fitting models and an approach to meet the needs of your business with context. So a data intelligence point of view breaks apart the system. Instead of using a single model, it's going to use the right model for the right moment in time, right fitting the solution. And this is important because just as a result of doing this, nothing else, they saw a 25% jump. And this is before fine tuning. This is just using a data intelligence approach. So if you think about that, getting that baseline to 85%, that's massive. But where does that go? How do you do this with a systems-based approach? Let's talk about that. To right fit components in your AI application, you need to think about this with that systems approach I mentioned. At Databricks, what we've discovered is you have to reorient yourself from using a single model to thinking about how you can give yourself flexibility throughout your AI stack. You need to be able to build and prepare that data so that you can fundamentally trust it. You need to build and deploy agents using models easily and ideally the ability to use multiple models to leverage the right fit of the components. Some models are really good at understanding semantics. Some models are really good at synthesizing. Some models are really good at you know, queries. Then you should be able to build and evaluate that model and continuously evaluate it over time so you can understand where performance can be improved. And then finally, you need the ability to govern your AI stack from a central location so that you can ensure you're building this with security, with privacy, and doing so in a safe and compliant way. Collectively, this creates a system, and this system forms the foundation of a successful AI stack. So let's bring it back to what we saw earlier. In a perfect world, you want to use a unified data and AI platform to address the needs at each level of your AI stack. And this is something that Databricks is hyper-focused on. A unified platform for data and AI that eliminates data silos and allows for scale able to handle any type of data at any frequency. Two, a platform that treats your AI workloads as first-class citizens in a systems-based approach. And three, one that you can share the output of that AI initiative internally and externally without having to move or copy the data. This is the future of data and AI, and this is what it means to think about it from a data intelligence point of view. And this is what forms the basis of a successful AI stack. So I want to say thank you. And if you'd like to learn more about what Databricks is doing in data and AI, everything from BI to AI, click this little QR code or take a photo of that with your phone. Um, and if you'd like to learn more about what we're doing in the world of telecommunications as well, it's all available up on there. So really appreciate the time, and thank you to Mobile World Congress and the team for letting us be here. Thank you.